Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ukulele on the Ground podcast. My name is Aldrin Guerrero. Joining me are Mr. Aaron, the voice, Nakamura. Say what's up, Aaron. What's up? And Mr. Kahai, the legend, Ferguson. Say what's up, Kahai. What's up? Trio's here. We're going to be talking to Ukulele. That's what we do here on the podcast. We answer any and all of your questions. You ask us questions. I try to give you my best two cents, and the other guys give their two cents. We'll come up with the best six-cent answer just for you we are alive so we have a live chat you can chat with chat along with us you can uh, give us your opinions we can you can give us your questions uh and you'll get answers to them if we feel like it right kahai yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> if we if we feel like answering your question if we feel like just sitting here talking about the good old days of great animation by nickelodeon we're gonna do just that right kahai mm-hmm Yep. And so, just, what do you want? Do you answer quest- questions, or do you want to just talk Nick Tunes? Oh, it's yeah. our show, man. We do whatever we want. Well, what what do you think is the golden era of Nick Tunes? Ooh, that's a, why would you ask me that? <laughs> this is an hour conversation. I, thought, I guess we're not talking ukulele today, everybody. <laughs> I thought that would have been an easy one for you, like just during the original. No, well, so here's why. Here's why during the original, like you were gonna say, like um, of course it's like it's Rugrats, Doug. Yeah. Ren and Stimpy, all good. But notice Ooh. that that did not have Rocco's Modern yeah. Life in it. So that's why. That's the first era of, of, of Nicktoons. So we would be... We would be... Uh, Pre-Rocco? Yeah, it was pre-Rocco. Pre-Rocco was way okay. one. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. maybe... Yeah, and, and there were some great Nicktoons after that. You know what I mean? Like Rocco was, uh, was, was really good. I, uh, you know, I, I liked, I liked some other stuff too. You know, angry, like, angry beavers. A, yeah, angry beavers were great, man. That theme, so good, mm-hmm. so ska. And yeah, yeah. You, you know, okay. you know, I, the three of us here in this room can all agree, ska's amazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, hey well, Arnold, I don't know. You know, that was actually more Latin, I guess. There, you know, and like kind of jazzy. Kablam like, was definitely <laughs> oh yeah, Kablam. Star. Yes, 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 yes. Kablam, Kablam. <laughs> I like. Of course. Hey, uh, Mike Hind is in yeah. the chat. Oh, nice. What up, Mike? Yeah, and then Mike said, dude, Rocco's Modern Life, Ren and Stimpy. So, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, like, if we're talking first wave, that's that's just Ren and Stimpy, Doug and Rugrats. And, and, and I feel like those three are great. You know, those three started the whole Nicktoons boom. But we got we to gotta give it up for, uh, yeah, Angry Beavers. All Real Monsters is also really good. You know, of course, Hey Arnold was yeah. was really good. So we wouldn't have those if we just picked that era. Yeah. Mike said Cow and Chicken. That another one. Cow and Chicken is Cartoon Network. <laughs> talk- come, come on. Oh, Nickelodeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're Nickelodeon. talking Nicktoons. <sighs> Mike, and I just said, I just acknowledged you on this. <laughs> and then you're going to come up with Cow and Chicken. <laughs> ah, not saying the Cow and Chicken isn't great, but it's not Nicktoons. That's it. We're, let's... Shut down the whole podcast. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nah, just joke. We're talking ukulele today. That's what we do. This is the ukulele on the ground podcast. It's not a Nicktoons '90s podcast show. Although I, I don't know how many you, times you I've had a petition. <laughs> yeah, I petitioned for the name change of the show. I, I'm I'm falling to deaf ears from from the overlords above. Okay, we just. I guess we gotta talk ukulele. So Kahai, what's the first ukulele question? <laughs> okay, yeah, this one is from last week, right? Yeah, this is our cliffhanger. We got our cliffhanger from last week. So uh, Mike said a different Mike. Mike, uh, said, no hair. Yeah. No uh, getting bored with strumming. Any suggestions for arpeggios to use and how mm-hmm. to practice them? Hmm. Okay. So if you're getting bored of strumming, it is probably because uh, I, you know, you're you're either. Should, strumming with just like strumming patterns i feel or, like uh should we should you do the arpeggio part first and then we can go into like i feel like the okay. strumming yeah, is that's a okay. whole, that's, whole that's, different that's, okay okay that sounds, that sounds good yeah. that sounds good i was doing it in order okay yeah. so uh suggestions for arpeggios to use and how to practice them okay so as long as you're holding a chord okay you can do arpeggios to, to that chord. you can arpeggiate that chord um the most 
basic of arpeggio of course is like the low to high high to low kind of you know kind of thing going on right so for example low to high would be your lowest string for me with with the high g it's a c and then there's an e and then there's a g and there's the a string so that's an arpeggio and then high to high to a low you can go back down so high being that a string then the g then the e then the c we refer to this at Ukulele Underground, and I, I'm sure in a lot of other places, um, as the in to out technique or out to in. So in to out being the inner strings, C, E, G, A, then out to in, A, G, E, C. Or you can take the last A and connect the two. So you can do C, E, G, A, G, E, C. So that's going from low, then to high, back to low, low, then to high, back to low, low, right? So you can do that if you want to. If uh, if you know notes from the C scale, so let's go, uh, you know, a, a little bit, uh, a little bit more advanced. Of course, with the last one, you can change chords, and uh, because you're playing the lowest to the highest string, that's gonna sound really nice. So F is gonna sound as long as you're sticking in the chord family. Yes. As long as you're like you're playing the chords of the song, really, like you can play the chords of the song or page eight, that should be all good. And um, just know that each hit of the arpeggio equates to one strum. If you're doing strumming patterns, for example, if you do like down, down, up, up, down, up, if that's a strumming pattern that you do a lot. Each one of those strums equates to one uh, hit of the string to uh, to an arpeggio. What do I mean by that? Um, if you do it rhythmically, down, down, up, up, down, up can be reinterpreted in um, in arpeggio as So down, down, up, up, down, up. So down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. And of course, you know, like uh, like I'm gonna get into later, you don't have to play that same pattern all the time. You can you can take uh, each, you know, uh, most of the time we play in a four, four time signature. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three. Those are like the most common, right? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You can think of it as one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But, you can also segment those beats smaller. So it's not just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You can do one and two, three, four, one and two, three, four, one and two and three, four, one and two and three, four. They all land and can can work with that C chord. So one, two, three, four, one and two, three, four, one and or one and two and three, four. And you don't even have to stick to the uh, to the low to high back to low thing. I'm just saying that's the most basic thing that you can do. But you can hit whatever string that you want to hit, or whatever string sounds good to you. You can go low, medium, low, high. So low, medium, low, high. You can do that if you want to. B. Uh, I'm not gonna say anymore because I want you to be more creative about it, okay? Because I can give you some, and you're like, okay, well these are the ones that I'll dream gave, so I'm gonna do these like forever, you know? Like just be creative. Find some on your own, and as long as it fits the rhythm, it's correct. There's no wrong notes that you're, you know, that you're gonna hit as long as you're playing the chord with your left hand. So no matter what, um, what string I'm gonna hit on the right hand, it's gonna be the right note. So you can do. Um I, that was like a random, I'm just hitting random notes, strings on the right side. It sounds good. It is up to you to be creative with which strings you hit and in what um, uh, rhythm or groove that you're hitting them in. Okay? So with that said... You try uh, to match the song. Yeah, you can try to match the song. If you're, you're not just strumming... You know, you're not like doing random strums. You try to kind of add a groove, trying to match the song that you're doing. If it uh, if it sounds like the song is going on a low, you know, a low note, you hit the low note there. If it sounds like it's going high, it's 
it's gonna go high. So you can take a song from you know that that has finger picking in it, and you can kind of translate that over to ukulele. You can listen to like a James Taylor song, for example, that has a lot of you know like finger picking and stuff, and that would be the best you know kind of reference as to what kind of finger picking thing you can you know you can do listen to things like that or jim croce or whoever does like a lot of finger picking stuff try to recreate those uh those sounds that you hear listening to those kind of songs onto your ukulele because it's just a matter of low notes high notes so on and so yeah. forth okay w would you say that there's a difference between because like he used like the term arpeggio yeah is arpeggio just like low to high or high to low and then finger picking is the random um i guess so but like yeah the arpeggio are just like spelling out the uh the chords yeah. to yeah. you know to to uh the notes to the chords so if i guess i mean in in a traditional sense or in an easier sense that arpeggio is the low to high and, and you would probably usually but, start with the the root no the root but the root. like or you can you can do an inverted it yeah, yeah you can I do an inverted arpeggio, arpeggio yeah because yeah. like for ukulele or string instruments mm -hmm. playing arpeggios isn't actually that hard right mm -hmm. so it's like kind of yeah. like that term that people use it i think it's like used as like uh what is it like a just a ooh check out this new thing i learned arpeggio yeah, yeah. throwing yeah, out the yeah. term so cool yeah, yeah. So cool. but really that's all it is with just like with a low g it would be just in order right yeah, yeah, yeah it would just be top to bottom then yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and like your uh, lowest string to your highest string yeah in and, order it's one of those things too where it's like it is a musical term and it is a musical technique but i think it's like in if you think about single note instruments like mm -hmm. a trumpet or like a flute or something mm -hmm. arpeggiating something then yeah. that's like oh yeah that's a lot more Playing. work into it where yeah. you gotta like actively switch what notes you're playing right in which or whatever mm -hmm. order yeah, yeah but for ukulele and guitar or string instruments you kind of hold the chord and then you just like pick the <laughs> yeah, strings. Pick yeah, yeah, yeah. One and, of the strings and it's probably going to be within. It's going to be good. So, yeah, it's going to be good as long as you're holding the chord correctly. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think like people don't think of like, it's like, oh, you know what's a great arpeggio song? Mm. Extreme more than words. <laughs> <laughs> but that is, right? Like you're yeah, just yeah. holding the chord yeah, yeah. and you're doing like a yeah, basic. Finger picking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, landslide, uh, mm -hmm. man who won't, can't be named or man who can't, can't be moved. Moves, yeah. yeah. So there's like good riddance is another yeah. one. Yeah, it's like yeah, all those so songs. I guess the the more general term would be finger picking, right? Yeah, finger yeah. picking. So that applies to pretty much everything. Yeah, and just using your fingers to pick. Yeah, <laughs> and, like and then and that could also it. apply yeah. to like not just single notes, but like multiple strings mm -hmm. at the same time. Well, what about finger style, Aaron? It's the style of. And you're picking your fingers, <laughs> finger of the style. Yeah, yeah. It's like because uh, everything else you don't yeah. use your fingers, right? So yeah, <laughs> it's foot style, it's elbow like a, style. What is it? Animal like the animal listing? It's like the genus and the family oh. and the, whatever. So it's like finger style, then finger picking, then arpeggios, yeah. then and yeah. then there's like drunken monkey, and then <laughs> <laughs> for a second I thought I thought Kai was actually gonna say the words animal style. I was like, which is my favorite style of French fry. <laughs> Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> there it goes turn to food again <laughs> <laughs> can't help it yeah so um so the other part of the question yeah. <laughs> so well no not no nah, i want to get into one more thing about arpeggio so it's not just about holding chords and you're doing it, although that's the most basic thing that you can do uh -huh. but you can also add notes to the scale kind of um from the scale of uh, of the key that you're in so for example in c i have that do re mi there so i can go if you were to hear you know if you were just to listen to what i do or, or watch what 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 i did uh, and not knowing the context of like i'm just playing the c chord and i'm adding notes from the scale to that c chord you would say that like man that's some fancy finger style that he's that he's doing yeah, you know yeah, yeah. but I think that they would like people would say, "Oh, that's like oh, James that's Taylor, all. right?" That's some good yeah. stuff, you know. So, uh, but really, you can add notes from the scale to your chords. Those would just be extensions to that chord. So you can go. So I just play the scale going up by finger picking it, and that works the same with you know when you're in F. So I'm in F now. I'm gonna add notes from the C because I'm in that key. So or 
G. If yeah. the chord progression contains the, yes. those chords. All I'm doing is I'm arpeggiating or figure picking on the right side and I'm just kind of hitting notes from the scale adding on to the chord. Notice that it's holding the G chord and then adding the notes within that, you know, within that chord or on top of that chord. Okay, so that is, so we got like the basic finger picking and or basic arpeggio. Let's just call it finger picking. Let's call it what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, finger yeah. picking. And then um, and then a little bit more advanced finger picking would be that. Okay. Basic plus. Bas yeah, basic plus. Basic, <laughs> I guess it wouldn't even be advanced because advanced you'd be adding technique and stuff like that where you're just playing just the notes on top of, uh, top of the chord. Now, the first part of this, we're like, I'm bored with strumming. Okay. You're, how do I put this nicely, Kai? How, how do I put this nicely? How do I put this nicely? Oh, uh, well, like, uh, are you really bored with strumming? Yeah. Or it's, are you it's bored? It's understandable yeah. if you're approaching it in a oh. certain way. Yeah, yeah I, I, how I wanted to talk about this is, so what do you think, why do you think he's bored of strumming? When he says, I'm bored of strumming, what, what kind of strumming do you think? Like is? What, what goes through my mind? Or what's when most I hear, likely? Yeah, what, yeah when yeah. I hear those words, like I'm bored with and strumming. Like, I would say like, can, can you give an example of like a boring strumming mm -hmm. and how from there it's like you can get out of like the so-called boring strumming, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, boring strum. I'm just gonna play random chords, okay? I'm not gonna play anything in particular. I'm gonna play <laughs> random chords, okay? And I'm gonna play a random strumming. Now, I didn't think about this at all. I'm just gonna randomly strum. <laughs> Unpremeditated. Okay, here we go. Just randomly in the key yeah. of C, just playing chords, right? Not, yeah. you know. All right. So, <laughs> with with that, that's kind of what I think of when when someone's saying you know, like I'm bored strumming. They're probably strumming that away with like you know with some basic chords because if. If you took extra steps, it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be boring. Even just one step forward, which would be just, remember when I said, and, and I wanted to get to that part. Remember when I said, I, you can add, you can finger pick, you can add notes to the finger picking. Right, and it sounded super fancy. Same thing. The thing that I did at the end, because instead of just going from C to C7, this B is part of that scale. I'm adding that B to add a, uh, a melody line to the strum. So now when I go to that F, you don't have to just play F. You can add any of the notes from the scale. So, so you go. Already, it sounds like a million times better, okay? Mm -hmm. And instead of, you know, da 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 da, I'm just doing a simple down up down up. So I I actually made the right hand more boring, you uh -huh. know, in this sense. I made the right hand down up down up down up. But because I added notes to my chords that I'm already playing. That made it sound like it's not as boring. Although, technically, it's super boring on the right side because I'm just going da 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 da, right? Now, if you're bored with strums, there are some techniques to add. You can add rolls, you can add chunks, you can do finger picking, you can uh, you can do half strums, yeah, half down strums, half up strums. You can uh, you know you can add mutes on the left side. There's so much things that you can do to create different kinds of strums. So now uh, I'm just gonna add one technique, and that's the roll. Okay, to to that. See how much like this brightens up that boring strum. Here we go. Yeah. 
It already sounds a lot more comp uh, complicated, although it's not. And the other thing that I'm doing that I did not, uh, I did not mention, I'm gonna add some accents because the roll already adds an accent in there, mm -hmm. okay? But if you add accents, which means playing some stuff softer, playing some stuff louder. So if it's just like all one strong, all one volume, of course, it's gonna be boring. That's another thing that I think of when someone says my strum is boring. I'm gonna strum exactly the same, okay? I'm gonna do that down, down, up, up, down, up strum, but I'm gonna add volume, okay? So I'm gonna take out volume, I'm gonna add volume, watch. So it's that same down, down, up, up, down, up. But what I did was I did down, and then that down, the second down was soft, down. So instead of, it sounded as, see the difference that makes, just something that simple, just to take out stuff. Like taking out things makes other things stand out more when, when you yeah. do that. Because if every if everyone is special, then there, there's nobody special, that kind of thing, you know? So you need to make some soft so that when you, you know, when you, uh, when you play it again, then it, it comes out a little bit more, okay? Or if you can have a medium, so a mezzo forte, you can have a piano and you can have a forte. If you have all three of those things in your strum, it won't sound boring. And that's just, that's just volume. So now you mm -hmm. add technique to that. And then you add, um, you know, even like more advanced techniques. So you, that the technique that I'm talking about is just that roll that I added. And then on top of that, you can add notes on the left hand. And on top of that, you can add different inversions to it. There's just so much things um, during strumming that, that you can do. If strumming was so boring, then, uh, then a song like Crazy G would not be exciting at all because that's all strumming, right? Like it's not a finger picking song. You don't finger pick in, in, uh, in Crazy G. Um, and also, you know, like great songs like, uh, you, you know, anything by like Ukulele Ike or, or any of like the great UK strummers, like that's, it's just a lot of like really fast strumming. So we're not even getting into like split no, strokes and fan strums yeah. and complicated strums. There's so much that you can do. So when when you mention or when you say something like oh strumming is boring you you know you're probably limiting yourself on on your strum and that limitation is what's causing the boredom to strumming if you open your mind to uh to to other things like technique and uh and things on that you know uh, considering your left hand into this equation or thinking about the style of music that that you're that you're playing even because uh, you know if you're playing folk music great that's that's fun that's a fun thing to play but if you go from folk to funk you know it's two totally different. different strums that you'd be doing so but it's still strums and it wouldn't be boring so you're going from like to um I'm just strumming, but I'm adding, you know, like the funky, um, uh, like rhythms. I'm adding like um, some, like some mute techniques and stuff. So if you just change genres, it would already make a big difference in the strumming part of it. Yeah. Last night uh, mm -hmm. at the Ukulele Club, yeah. like we played um, "Come Together." Yeah. And like that song, so the the majority of that song is just one chord, right? Yes, C minor. Yeah. Yeah. But and then what makes that song isn't that yeah. it's like strumming all the time, right? It's yeah. like that it has that two hits, the dun yeah, yeah. dun, and then you gotta break for the drum, yeah. like the dun, 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 dun. yes, 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 dun dun. You need those yeah. hits, and you need to. Dun, 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 dun. Or you can strum more. Dun, dun. But even that's kind of fun because you're yeah. fooling around with the rhythm and stuff. You can add yeah. more things. This is where we add the technique. Yeah. It's sort of mimicking but the I, per percussion mm -hmm. of it. But it's, it's the same strum. Yeah. You know? like it's the same rhythm. I mean, da, 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 yeah. da, 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 da. That's the basis of it. But you're adding all these things and making things a little bit more exciting. It's 
So, you know, you're adding those little, like, soft piano yeah. hits, you know? Yeah. Piano is in the uh, the volume. Yeah. Pe piano, that's a forte and forte. Yeah. I think, and... <laughs> Play that song with just the down, down, up, up, down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, yes, it will be boring, you know, if that's what you're doing. And the I think, whole time, uh, I don't really like come boring. together anymore. <laughs> I hate come together. <laughs> I Why? get it, I get next, it. Next song. <laughs> and I think, I mean, we yeah. were uh, guilty of this too, right? Yeah. Like when we do the jam, we tell people like, play at your level and you can simplify it down to just these basic drums yeah. mm -hmm. and definitely do that. But like, if you feel like you're bored with it, that's probably why yeah, it's like, yeah. it's then move up the level. Yeah, move yeah. up a level. There's different levels yeah. to, to strumming. If yeah, you're bored with that, that, you that then you can always like, you know, move up a level, right? Like uh, last night when we were playing at the club, mm -hmm. like we were playing songs and it's like songs that I know I'm like, okay, I'm comfortable with these songs. Yeah. And hearing everybody else play it, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to play in versions then, right? Yeah. Like yeah, just yeah. to yeah. add that color yeah. to the whole group. You know, everybody else, they have all the basic chords, they have right. the basic strumming. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just be like overlapping them. Like I can just add yeah. like a little bit more. And it's just, it's nobody else is going to hear me playing and be like, mm -hmm. wow, are you playing inversions? But it's just for myself to be like, yeah. I can do this. Might as well. Like just have fun with it. Yeah. Experiment, try out these things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, even that. So Kahai is talking about inversions. So if you don't know inversions, it's just, it's the same chord, but just played in uh, uh, higher up the neck or a different way you're just changing the voicing so for example c you can think of c oh sorry you can think of c as c e g then c at the top so meaning c is the lowest note but the the notes really are just c e g and there's another c so c e g you can take those same three notes and maybe you could go e g c so just you know, inverting—that's where the word inversion comes from. Um, the, uh, the the triad. If the triad is C in the bottom, the E in the middle, then G at the top. You can go E in the bottom, G in the middle, and C on top, or G in the bottom, C in the middle, E on top. So this is with the C E G C in the bottom. This is C. Uh, so E G C with the E on the bottom. Right here is. G, C, E with the G on the bottom. So those are all three, the same three notes going up here. There's another one here. There's another one there, okay? So you could just go, even if we're doing, uh, yeah. If, but if you're playing the same C minor, you it might come boring, but if you add like this, another C minor here, there's another C minor right here. Can, we can add those, make it sound. Can Aaron play? Can you guys play together? And can yeah, you yeah, play yeah. the inversion yeah. while Aaron plays? So Aaron will play the basic C minor. Do so Aaron's doing this. Okay, you can go. Right? It's just playing around with the different yeah. inversions already makes it sound much more fun that, than that. So I think what's happening here is just that, yeah, you've kind of limited yourself to just this like one, you know, kind of either kind of one kind of strum or one genre of music or one style or whatever. There's so many things that you can do that, that will expand and, and, and change your views on like on, you know, on strumming. Yeah. Cause even I'm gonna call out Jim, not right now. Right. Because uh, <laughs> yeah. Jim says two card, two chord songs are mind numbing, and he said I think boring is more related to boring songs with repetitive strumming, especially with few chord changes like horse with no name. Up. Oh, you could be <laughs> more wrong, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You could be more wrong. Cause like, well, yeah, he... with with two chords on on the ukulele, right? On the ukulele with two chords, that means at least three different inversions per chord. That's six different chords that you can play already just on paper, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, with, with the ukulele on paper. And then add to that all the notes that I said you can add on to those, you know, to those uh, to those chords from uh, from that key. Then you have at least I don't, you know, if it's like seven notes, seven different notes per like per key per chord, two. You know, we already said we have three different inversions. So two times three is six and six times seven, 
You know, there's like so much things that you could do with those two chords and not just playing those two chords over and over again. You as a, uh, as a keyboard player, as a piano player should know the importance of, uh, of of inversions of adding um adding chords on top of the adding extensions to those chords so something like a horse with no name doesn't have to just be those two chords that you know that, that you're playing it can be it can go up here you can add melody to those you know to those two notes i mean if if he's gonna call it out like that can i call him out a little bit <laughs> can, can, is he is it gonna be okay with that okay maybe if you look beyond the music score <laughs> and uh and add things that you know you as an individual and as a uh, you know as a musician want to add rather than following the music to the t which is just uh, i don't know like what is horse with no yeah, that's yeah. Right. B, e minor and, D, and e minor and b minor so if i'm playing that that's that's kind of like you on your keyboard just going playing those two chords over and over mm -hmm. yeah it'll be boring but that's if you stick to just those two chords two chord songs are not necessarily boring because if it was so boring then guys like bob marley you yeah. know guys yeah. like uh yeah we have a yeah. one chord play we have a along. one chord play along and that thing sounds amazing yeah so like it's not just it's not just that you cannot limit yourself to you know to uh to just those things this is coming from the same guy who uh who said rap was not great <laughs> we're like oh let me tell you about rap <laughs> sir it's amazing and like yeah. the uh the bars that they do the uh, the accents on those bars that they do and the, and the play on words and there's just so much stuff about it you cannot like a genre but you cannot dismiss like the uh you know the intricacies of said genre right yeah i feel like I, also when people say like oh this song i learned this song at my club and it's boring mm. it's like yeah because they're probably teaching the easiest version of it to get make yeah. sure that everybody plays along yeah so have you listened to the original version and if you yeah. listen to the original more often than not mm -hmm. it's more complicated than you thought yeah right? yeah yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah and with horse with no name the strumming is pretty yeah fun. it's pretty fun <laughs> yeah it's got that gallop in there yeah because like, it, it emphasizes a lot of the ups yeah so yeah 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 yeah. So it, it goes the... yeah and if it was yeah if it was boring to to play that song it wouldn't be so like be so popular like there's a reason why the songs are popular you know like yeah oh, yeah just ooh yeah <laughs> and I, I, I think that's also a yeah. point we're talking about too is that you can get to a point in your music like if you get to a point in your musicality mm -hmm. you can turn whatever song that you don't like into a song that you do yeah. like yeah, 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 that's half the fun. <laughs> that's half yeah. the fun, you know. Like uh, Aaron does this great rendition of uh, of Miley Cyrus's "Party in the USA," which is two chords. Also, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah, two yeah, chords. Yeah. Like C and, major. And the original and has more, more has chords way more than chords. that. Yeah. The way that Aaron, like you know, Aaron did it with two chords, I actually like, prefer over the original. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> it's much more fun that way. Kyle does shake it off two chords. Yeah, again. two chords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, like and. Honestly, or like, can I ask you honestly, Aaron, yeah. did you like the original Party in the USA? Or was it just like, it's an okay song, it's popular right now, Yeah, yeah, yeah I want to see what I can do with it. Yeah, it's like, it was too pop for me. Yeah, And so mm -hmm. that's why, like, it, not not necessarily like I'd hate mm -hmm. it or anything. Mm -hmm. It was just that it was like too poppy yeah. for me to sing. So yeah. like I, I <laughs> tried to turn it into something that like would be more in line with my style. Yeah. And so that's that's part of the the charm that's of the of way that that's I do part it. Of fun. Yeah. But the original, like right off the bat, like the first like two measures of that song or four measures of that song with the with the guitar, it like the the rhythm is super complicated. You know? yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like there is a fun kind of strumming, since Rodon was strumming to you know to that. So yeah, maybe if you look beyond the music, <laughs> the music sheets, then you can come up with some fun things. Yeah, you know? a lot of it too has to do with what what Kahai was saying. Like, listen to the original song, and then with your strumming yeah. or with like the way that you're playing, try to mimic what not just the guitar, the guitar. is doing. Yeah, you, yeah, you're yeah. mimicking what the entire band is doing Bass, on your drums, one ukulele. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. I I think and I think there's like you can find depth in uh maybe not boring but simplicity, right? Yeah. Simple things cuz like a lot of times when songs are made simple, they're made simple for a reason. Mm -hmm. Like if the chord 
pattern is simple it's because mm-hmm. they want you to listen to the more complex rhythm uh or lyrics yeah and yeah, yeah. like take that in more so than like hey you know and then that that can be why too like yeah. jazz songs can maybe go off into like more yeah. complex chords yeah because uh, lyrically they pull away from that right yeah. like they're like okay we're not gonna show as much lyrical nuance but we're gonna do more chordal nuance yeah and in those like complex uh, complexity of the chords but when you break it down a lot of jazz is that two five one is like three yeah, yeah, yeah. three chords that, that based yeah. off of that two five and, one and just you know and a huge tradition in jazz right is taking pop songs of the mm-hmm. era and then turning it into like a jazz song or yeah. like using that as the core structure to like okay now i can like jazz it up you know yeah. like people aren't gonna come to my club and want to want me to play like these are my favorite things yeah but if I do, and somebody who's yeah, not used to jazz, yeah, they're going to be like, holy crap, what is this? This yeah. is amazing. Uh-huh. So expected from somebody who reads music. <laughs> oh, 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 he can take it. Jim can take it. Yeah, yeah that's, that's why <laughs> I mean, yeah. I know, I know. Jim's yeah. got, he's got a Teflon skin, just like us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I feel like Jim is going to come back next week and be like, guys, I have my rebuttal. You know, so <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's why we, we Ooh, love you, Jim. Great comeback <laughs> a week later. Um, no, uh, I think with this show, we kind of have to have, like, I, I've been on the internet since... I don't know, 2003 or whatever. And I've like have sh- showed myself on like on, on YouTube playing and stuff. I've, I've heard it all from uh, from the you suck to the you look like the guy from Spider-Man. <laughs> you look like <laughs> Spider-Man's friend. <laughs> like, That's a little racist. But yeah, I get I, whatever. I, I see it. I guess he's <laughs> Filipino and I'm Filipino. Looks good. Kind of chubby. I'm kind of chubby. You know, he's he's like he's he's stacked now. So maybe I don't look like him anymore. <laughs> now he's jacked and I'm still chubby. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he doesn't he doesn't have my farmer's tan from you get what you guys can can see you see that well, I like super duper light skin and then the dark skin on the bottom he doesn't have my farmer's tan guy totally a different person <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay Go ahead. uh john said which uu plus modules do you recommend for learning uh and practicing chord inversions i know a few inversions but not many I don't know what you mean by modules, but Probably like uh, classes. Yeah. Lessons okay. And classes. Okay. So, if uh, if you want to learn um, the uh, inversions and stuff like that, Soul of Secrets Revealed, best like best one that you you can go check out if you want to learn um, efficiency um, inversions because that I think just using two different inversions of like you know of a certain chord. Uh, yields really good results but you can learn like more than just two inversions and and you know and, and get a, uh, get good results and stuff but i think um yeah soul seeks review and it shows you how to use those not just in a strumming sense but also in a picking sense yeah actually yeah. um on our youtube channel i did a a video Mm. on how to figure out chord inversions oh, for cool. any chord yeah, cool, using cool, cool, the, cool. the fretboard diagram. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, yeah. Basically, mm-hmm. like, you use, you have your fretboard diagram mm-hmm. and you take any chord that you know and you um, map it out, basically, on your entire fretboard and then you mm-hmm. can circle, like, the different in- inversions based off of that. So, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll put it in the chat, but... I know in Ukulele 102 too, uh, one of the weeks is... Uh, inversions. Inversions, yeah. but then also chord families. Oh, yeah, yeah. And how they relate. Mm. And so if you learn the inversions for a chord family, it's kind of like you know all the inversion. You just move the entire chord yeah. family inversion up and down the neck. And yeah. you can like yeah. just change it to any key you want, change it to mm. any chord. So that's how you can really get into like knowing the same chord, but throughout the neck too yeah. yeah yep nice nice okay now do we have any other questions Kahai? um i'll check some more but i think i think we got the main ones so nice far. nice so now can we talk nick tunes <laughs> 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 now that we've satisfied the crowd can we satisfy us you get know? back but like it. <laughs> no 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 um let's see uh well i have been um I, we we did the ukulele club last night. That was super fun. So if you guys uh, are looking for a place on Kauai to jam some some music, um, definitely every first Sunday of the month here on Kauai. This is our third one, and I learned a lot from kind of like building our own ukulele club. That 
I, the, the main thing that I learned is if you build it, they will come. <laughs> like that's, that's like the most important lesson that I've learned. So for those of you folks, and I'm saying this not to like, not to be like, hey, not to brag, like, hey, look at us. We got like so much people in our club, but no, I'm saying this because we get a lot of emails um, uh, and questions of like, should I start a new Kolala club or how do I start a new mm -hmm. Kolala club in my area and stuff? Or how do I find a new Kolala club? Um, yeah, first off is see if there's if there's one already in, a, in, in your area, then just kind of go go to that one. If not, if you want to start one, just start it. Just pick a place to meet up and it could just be you know, as simple as you and like two or three other friends. And that could just be an ukulele club. It can be as simple as that. And then, you know, it'll grow from there because once people find out that you're gathering and you're, uh, you're playing ukulele together, um, what I found is that it kind of spreads like wild, wildfire. I mean, granted, we, uh, we came with the, you know, with, with a recognizable name of like ukulele or us or Aldrin or Aaron and stuff. And that's why people kind of jumped on in on it. But I think that people just want to play uke honestly i think people are just looking for uh for like-minded individuals that like wants to enjoy the ukulele as much as they do so if you build it they will come that's what i've learned in, in the in the past three months of doing this ukulele club how about okay so how yeah. about what are problems that people will find when they start an ukulele club and what mm. did you do to like solve these problems or like what would you suggest for people to kind of get over these things what um, are the common things that happen when you first start a club well common things that can happen you're just like uh, you know like uh, how do i you know how to get the word out and stuff like Honestly, just start like a social media, um, start a Facebook um, and just post it. Because if even if it's just your friends and family that like, you know, that, that see it or uh, like I said, go, you know, go check out if there's a scene in your, you know, in, in your area. If there's a scene in your area, then by all means, you know, just go join that scene. Um, but if you don't have uh, a scene in your area and you want to start one, you can still find like musicians in that area on like a Facebook post or Instagram yeah. and stuff like that. Or even just like the Ukulele Underground Forum. You can use the Ukulele Underground Forum to see if there's anyone in that area that's already part of say the Ukulele Underground and uh, and you can find like-minded people. If not, then there's always Facebook groups and stuff like that to uh, to start it up. But yeah. just, just start it. Just meet up somewhere, even if it's like a park pavilion, you know, like it, it doesn't have to be like, we're, we're meeting up at this restaurant or this coffee shop or whatever or this like neighborhood center mm -hmm. um, you can just go to a pavilion a park pavilion and just say hey uh, we're going to be at this park pavilion because in the early days of ukulele underground um, big things started from like really like small ideas like uh, I remember our friends um, Arvin and Bugoy was just like hey uh, we're in San Diego you know like we're just gonna start a bonfire or whatever and then if anybody wants to come and play ukulele with us you guys can come and then all of a sudden and that's it he, that's that's all they did was they said like hey we're just gonna have, we're gonna be at this place start a bonfire play ukulele and like 50 people came or something crazy like that. That was insane. That was the really early days of Ukulele Underground. And then another even bigger success story was, you know, um, Mike Hader from Main Nal Ukulele is like, hey, I have this huge space in my in my backyard. It's just like a grassy field. If uh, if you guys want, I have a, you know, I, can, I have a stage and some sound system. We can just get together and uh and, and play music do like an open mic thing all day or whatever and now it's like the ukulele world congress which is like huge right now so uh big things come from these tiny ideas that, that like turn into big 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 things so as long as your uh your intentions are in the right place you just want to celebrate ukulele and you're not in it for like okay i'm gonna do this i'm gonna charge and like no just do it for the love of you and people will uh people will follow i think Mm -hmm. yeah just build it and they will come yeah i think something that you guys did really well yeah. is like you prepared songs mm -hmm. to bring to it yeah and so it's like you started off you play songs and then you ask people like is there any songs that you guys want to play and if you want to play it you have to come up and teach the song or like sing the song to yeah, it, right? yeah yeah and so and then it's like you there's people who are like so eager they're like we should do this song and then when yeah. you say like okay come on up they're like oh oh n never mind never mind <laughs> which which is funny but like that is like mm -hmm. i don't know i feel like a good way for it's like people will be like okay mm -hmm. i do want to play that song i want the group to play that song 
So I'm going to prepare it and I'm yeah. going to get it ready for me to I show mean, it. Because I mean, if you want to play a, a song, and I always choose songs that people kind of know already, you know, mm -hmm. like so that people can easily enjoy it. But I mean, just like with the uh, just like with the club, just like with Ukulele Underground, and people requesting like, "Oh, you should teach this song," or like you and maybe three other people would like want to learn that you know learn that song. But it at least gives the people in the club a voice of like, "Hey, mm -hmm. if you really want to learn that song, then go ahead and teach us how to do it, and we'll play it with you." And you gotta you gotta sing it because none of us know that song. You know what I mean? So you kind of have to lead it because we could just strum the chords, but that wouldn't be as fun unless we like perform the song itself, lyrics, so on and so forth, you know? I think like also having that list of songs too, right? Like to show people like here, if nobody says anything, like let's look through this list and yeah. does anybody in the crowd want to take a song from this list? And because yeah. like uh, it is like sometimes where it's like, okay, what song should we play next? And then people are just like, I'm I'm just here to play anything, you know. I yeah. I don't. Yeah, a lot of play. times people are just cruise. People just kind of want to yeah. play. There are some people that want to play like you know specific things, and that's fine. Like yeah, they you know they're they're into it. That means they're into it. If there you have people that's kind of like let's play this song, then that's a good sign. You know that mm -hmm. means that people are into the uh, into the ukulele club that that wants to like jam specific stuff, which is which is really good. Yeah, yeah. and I think uh, if you can, if you already have people that you play music with like uh try and get them to come for like the first one or try to get them to come because then it's you kind of just already know like oh these are people that i know can play the songs and i don't have to worry and then they kind of fell out mm -hmm. and maybe they're playing the chords and other people can like turn to look at them for yeah. like how do i hold this chord or something else too so i think getting that good mixture of like maybe people who aren't experienced with the ukulele but are mm -hmm. experienced too right so that it's like people can rely on each yeah, other yeah, too yeah. it was good i mean i i dig it a lot and i always i always liked going to you know like say the mainland and visiting ukulele clubs around like you know uh, around the mainland and the nation even like uh it, especially like the uh the international ones and seeing like how they kind of run their ukulele clubs and stuff but I never thought I'd, I'd have one on, on my own. And now that I've, I've built one, it's one of those like, man, why isn't everybody doing this? I think this is super <laughs> fun because it didn't yeah. seem like that, you know, uh, it, it wasn't, I mean, it, it's hard in the sense of like organization. You got to kind of organize stuff. Yes, that gets hard, but it was pretty easy as far as like, hey, um, we're going to be in this place. We're going to play music. You guys want to come? <laughs> like that was really it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and then the organization kind of come after that. But for the, for the most part, like, hey, I like playing ukulele. Who else likes playing ukulele? Well, we're going to play ukulele at this place at this time for this long. You guys come if you want, whatever, you know? Yeah. And, I, and if you build it, they will come. I think uh, the fact that it's, like, once a month for mm -hmm. you guys, too, is, like, uh, it seems like there's people who come every, who came every single yeah, time, yeah. right? But there's also a lot of people who haven't come, and they, yeah. they come like every. So and that's often. fine. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Or they're they're new to it too. Yeah. Right. So. That's and it's cool. just growing. Like I think every time that that we've had it in these past three months, like there was just more and more new people that would come, or like I would hear about it. I guess someone would would come. And they're like, hey, they would tell their friend, they're like, I had I had a lot of fun at this one. Like you should come with me to this thing, even if they play ukulele or not. Um, uh, I think we just if you keep if you keep the vibe fun, I think people will like will attach themselves to that vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yes. So that's that's just from from my own experience. Now that I've experienced on it, I'm like, oh yeah, everybody should do this. <laughs> everybody should do this. It's yeah. it's so fun. It's it's like so much fun. I I can't even can't even describe like like what the, the the great feeling that i have when i come in and there's like more people even if there was like less people as long as seeing those people that are like eager that like oh yeah let's get started let's just play our first song and stuff and um yeah people were showing up like half an hour early yeah just to get a good seat <laughs> but you know it's uh it's it's really 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 fun so and it's the best way to get better honestly like if mm -hmm. you just um for for me like when you know when i when i was uh growing up playing the ukulele and learning the ukulele i was like a beginner i was looking for people to play with to kind of show and teach me things you know and that's one way to definitely get um get exposed to other people playing asking them questions and uh and just kind of learning rhythm and, and following grooves mm -hmm. i think it's a really 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 great way to uh, to get better at the ukulele yeah mm -hmm. i think 
like we were talking uh, about come together right yeah and that that was like the thing is like some people were just playing c minor and they're yeah. playing eighth notes like all the way mm-hmm. through so you can like tune into them if you're like more of a beginner you can tune into them and yeah. play like oh, yeah. okay i'll play like them but if you listen to like you playing or i think like <laughs> like me kyle and mike were sitting on the side yeah, yeah. And I feel like all of us were doing like the the two yeah. beat hits, right? Like, yeah. Because we knew, dude. like, yeah, yeah, to add that. So it's like, yeah, okay, I'll do that. And if you're playing in a club too, I feel like there's a mm. stigma with a club where it's like, oh, they just play the same songs and they just play the same like strumming pattern yeah, over yeah, and yeah. over and over again. Yeah. So it's like you, as a member, you can think like, how can I, even though. I might be small and I'm not like really changing the whole sound of the club Mm -hmm. instead of just adding to that same chord, Mm -hmm. same strumming pattern. How can I like add more color or add that texture to that, that, that sound. That's one thing that I told myself that I was going to do with this club, that I was going to try to promote like musicality and try to just like, just see if you can follow along like that kind of thing. If you can't, then we, we, um, you know, we introduce the concept of the Z chord and stuff, and you can just kind of do it Z chord if you're having a hard time with that. But it's it's a great time. It's a great yeah. time. So if you guys you, ever are, are here on the island, come down or look for one in your area. Go check it out. Yeah. I Jim mentioned earlier. What about the uh, like new player who like, thinks playing faster is better, so they just like play fast and yeah. loud <laughs> throughout the whole time. <laughs> then they'll just then they'll learn. That's I, that's the only way that you'll learn. You know what I mean? Like I I don't I you shouldn't discount anyone who's like who's excited if they're if they're playing fast and think the fast you, playing is good then they're just that's just how excited they are about the you, instrument you know like don't discourage those people. Yeah, you know what what something though in the like. I don't want to encourage people to be obnoxious in ukulele clubs. Yeah. But the truth of it is, so many people are playing the right chord and the right mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. You can play the wrong thing and nobody will notice it. <laughs> so if you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, I never get a chance to like solo or try out new things. Yeah. Go to a ukulele club with enough people where it's like you won't stand out. And it's like, you can, you can try it. Yeah. You can you experiment want. and yeah. do stuff. Play I know for the f- wrong notes. I know for a fact last night I was playing the wrong chords during songs and I like I don't think anybody yeah. noticed or and anybody did you like, did you not have fun you still had fun right yeah <laughs> I had fun trying to figure out am I playing the right <laughs> yeah. chord or am I not and yeah, like yeah, trying yeah. to hear myself in the, with the group too so yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, you weren't in a position where you could see the projector either, right? That's oh, yeah. That's that's I a great see, thing see, too. See, see, see. Is uh, me and Kyle were sitting on the side, and I think Kyle realized that I did not know the song. It was a uh, mm-hmm. uh, what is it? House on Pooh Corner, mm-hmm. and Kyle was playing, and he could kind of see it. So he just started yelling out the chords. He's like, C, A minor. <laughs> and I'm like, thank you, Kyle. That's why it's great. Like, have yeah. experienced people so they can be the Kyle of the group and they can yell at other people what the chords yeah. are going to be. That was good, too. Like, I did not expect, like, House of Pooh Corner to be requested yeah. last night. And it's cool that, like, people are asking for some, you know, like, not complicated songs, but just songs that are not in the same groove all the time. Yeah, because, yeah, and not the typical yeah, ukulele, ukulele club, club songs. songs. Yeah, yeah. Because there is Jake's Yomi Soda. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a couple of those mm. songs, right? Yeah. Like when at the start, I would say, but then later in the night, then mm. it just became like yeah, more, yeah. Like, more lax, more lax. Because we gotta, you know, I, I played some the some ukulele club songs just to kind of get people in the mood of ukulele club, but then like. You know, you got to sneak in a little bit of, like, uh, Electric Boogie in there. Or you got to sneak in a little bit of uh, Come Together and stuff like that. You even know? even Electric Boogie, right? That's a two-chord song. Yeah. And I think people might be like, oh, that's such a boring song. Yeah. yeah. That it's song fun. is so much fun. It sounds fun, man. Yeah. It sounds fun. If you just yeah. have fun with it. Yeah. I think yeah. the same thing with Come Together, right? That's a great song to show mm-hmm. people, like, mm-hmm. don't be afraid of bar chords this whole song is mm. mi- mostly one bar chord yeah and that's all you just gotta do right yeah i can just see jimothy just twirling his uh his his mm. mustache and saying this song is not sophisticated enough it's got two chords in it it needs more chords not sophisticated let me sip my tiny tea <laughs> mm, my, my oh. uh, <laughs> was it english breakfast 
I in much, Australia. <laughs> I much prefer a song for Mr. Kite, right? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that is the the advanced Beatles song. Yeah. <laughs> People must think that like, we don't. I love Jim. <laughs> People <laughs> think we, we, yeah, yeah. I love Jim. Jim is one of our one one of our longest, I guess, at this point, longest members of Ukulele yeah. Underground Plus, even you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah, a really great friend of ours. I think that's why we we can kind of take jabs a little bit at Jim. Yeah, <laughs> and we can be real. Jimothy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think uh, I was telling Kahai yeah. like the next time that they invite us. Yeah. To to Brisbane for their their ukulele festival. Yeah. Instead of us going, we should just send Kahai so that Kahai can <laughs> hang out with Jim <laughs> and stay in his house. <laughs> Jim, yeah. I I I don't mind traveling. Traveling's yeah. not bad. I hate snakes. I don't like snakes. <laughs> oh well, I told him that, and but it didn't, it didn't, didn't, matter. didn't, didn't matter. I didn't think matter. he brought us to. Uh, yeah, Australia is not going to be like, all right, everyone, Kai is coming. We're going to hold all the snakes in there. Yeah. I know. I hate. I hate them. I hate snakes. I will come to Australia for you, Jim. <laughs> or only for you. I will brave the snakes. Only just what, for like you. ten out of like the top whatever top twenty like most venomous Deadly snakes are snakes. like oh. are in Australia or something. Oh yeah. It's, was, huh? it's not even that the fact that they're venomous or anything. <laughs> I just don't like them. I hate snakes. <laughs> Where do you even pick them up, right? Like, uh. You know when you pick up a baby, when you pick up a like a like a puppy, when you pick up a cat, there's like you know, like a, a general way of picking those things up. Like, how, like, where do you pick up a snake? Like, where's arms and legs? That's what I mean. Where's arms and legs? You can't, you know, like, you can't <laughs> grab it. Like, uh, every so often, a cute baby. It, it picks you up. It picks you up <laughs> in its mouth. Uh, <laughs> every so often, I'm like browsing uh, a site and then it's yeah. like, here is my cute baby snake, and I'm yeah. like, nope, sorry. No. You can yeah. try as hard so as you can. I don't put like those it. in the category of ugly babies. <laughs> no, don't <laughs> like it. Don't like it. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. Anyway, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about. So, someone asked about the Monopolele Festival. I mm-hmm. can talk a little bit about that. I saw the lineup. Did you see the lineup? I just looked oh at it. Oh my gosh! It is star studded. Yeah. It is star studded. Show me the lineup on 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 the screen, Kai. Let me just announce this. Oh my goodness. And we're like top of the card for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> maybe oh you know, man, maybe alphabetical? No, no, it's Doesn't not. Matter. It's not. So Sinfonico Honolulu. It, that's that's like their local like ukulele group club thing that that they have. Okay. Uh, no, uh, can you show? Because I, I I can like read a, pretty like far, but you know, ukulele orchestra kind of, of Great oh, Britain, oh, yeah, but yeah, like oh, a, a great, local. Great. There it one. is. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So. Ones that I mean, there's there's a lot. There's definitely ones that that I recognize. Of course, Peter Moss. I recognize uh, Peter Moss. Who doesn't recognize the name Feng E? Feng E is gonna be in Monopolele, the Mediterranean Ukulele Festival. That's Southern Italy uh, Ukulele Festival. I'm gonna be there. But more importantly, <laughs> Feng E is gonna be. Let me scroll up a little. There's more. It's it's not even Let's just scroll. just yeah. There's Evan Jade the Silva. Yeah, Evan. Excited to meet him. Yeah, ex- I'm excited he, to meet him. He has been yeah, doing he's some amazing things. A great chops, great player. So Feng E and Evan in the same place. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Are you kidding me, everybody? God, so good. And of course, the the other musicians are great as well. But I'm just highlighting the ones that like these guys got some, got some, you know, poof, <laughs> some names behind, like, some power behind those names, you know. Yeah. Feng E like and Evan. Two youngsters that are taking the ukulele by storm. I cannot, cannot wait to go and just be blown away by those two performances. I'm, I'm more excited with about their performance. Yeah. Than I, honestly, yeah. you know, like when we're gonna go and we're gonna play our little songs and stuff, and then <laughs> just make way for these young like musicians, hammers that we call them here uh-huh. and, and uh, locally. Hammer. If you're a good musician, you use one hammer. Right, Nihoji. <laughs> yeah. Right, Nihoji, these guys is hammers. Yeah. Uh, I just George, saw his name on. George has uh, been all over Instagram too, right? He's yeah. Like, Man, so good. So good. Kathy Kathy Fink and Marcy Markster. Yeah, Marcy Markster. That you know, these names. So guys, now's the best time to book a trip to Italy. I think I think this festival. Whew, chef's kiss. I, I saw the names and I'm just 
they finally announced it because you know like they, they didn't have any kind of announcement yet then mm-hmm. finally announced the names who are going to be there feng e and evan i'm so excited of course i'm excited for all of them but my goodness i've played i've done a video with with feng e before and uh, we've done a video on evan's song you know we've uh stallion stallion we figured out this song stallion for our um, <laughs> sort of like, figured it out like one hour challenge or whatever yeah. cool challenge we sort I, of figured it out yeah as best I as i could I remember, mm-hmm. like, because, uh, like, w- the idea, right, for that mm-hmm. video was that uh, Aaron found Evan, and he showed him to you, and he was like, recreate this song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think you were doing it, and it's like, I think at one point in the video, you say, where is are these kids coming from? Because <laughs> <laughs> he was pretty young in, like, that yeah, Stallion yeah, yeah. video, too, right? Yeah. So, it was like, yeah. It's yeah. And he's only gotten better. Yeah. Since I know, then. geez, Hamas, capital H, as Niho says. Niho G in the chat. Hamas, Fengi, Hama, Evan, Hama, all of them. Yeah. George, Hama. <laughs> Did you see uh, Evan, uh, Evan J. De Silva's cover of Nothing's Gonna Change My Love? For no. You? Oh, <laughs> my awesome. gosh. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna check job. that out. Okay. It's like an instrumental <laughs> cover. Yeah, so it's good. So good. So. Now's now's a better time than any booking a trip to Italy, and it's not just like oh I gotta go to Italy all the way to Italy to watch this. Like it's not just this festival. Italy is is a destination in itself. I think Southern Italy, oh worth it. It looks gorgeous. <laughs> I cannot wait. I, my goodness, it's gonna be so good. It's gonna yeah. be so good. Me and Aaron are gonna go. You know, uh, like I said last time I went to Italy, I proposed to somebody. Aaron, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> is what 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 is the city called Mono- monopoly okay, monopoly. okay, okay. yeah ritesh is asking uh where is this festival and when yeah. is it gonna be so monopoly and it's like june what uh, four, may 30th uh, yeah may 30th through. to june 2nd yeah yeah and then check uh, so much fun three like five days or something that's gonna be so good yeah uh check monopoly.com if you're in the area yeah, or i guess monopoly.com even if you're not if you just want to go on a trip then yeah check yeah. it out worth it i think it'd be worth it you can hang out with us but I, but i mean those other guys are there too you should hang out with them yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you can yeah. allocate a small portion yeah. of your time for yeah, us for and us and the yeah. rest well it's like yeah. you can hang out with us but mm-hmm. we're probably gonna be hanging out with them uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah we'll be swooning yeah. over all the other artists hey. <laughs> oh, 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 it's gonna be so good it's gonna be so good Oh man, thank you, said I. I'm oh, so excited, so excited. Because we've never met any no, of these no. people, right? Or, we just we just know them. Person. I mean, we talk to them and yeah. stuff like online, but we never really met them in person. So I'm I'm so excited. It's gonna be good. What do we play? Now let's play our set. Who cares? <laughs> 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 that was my mistake back then. You know, like when I uh, when I was part of a card, it's like okay, cool. I need to make this set like the best set and better than everybody else. And I was just like, ah, I don't care. Like, let the young kids do the young kid yeah. things. You know, I don't need to do young kid things. But not saying it's not gonna be impressive or anything. That we're gonna try our best. But let the young kids do the young kid things. <laughs> we're just gonna have fun, and our set's gonna be good fun. Okay, Kai. Yeah. Anything else before we go? Uh, no, I think that's it. Yeah. Akila approved sponsor. I think so. I think sponsor uh, Akila is gonna be there. Yeah, so that's gonna be interesting. I haven't spoken to Ocula in forever, you know, and they're s- supposed to be my string sponsors, so. <laughs> uh, or just string More. collaborator. Maybe they're not even my sponsors. There's like string collaborator. Yeah. Is, I think is the the proper term there. So who knows? You know what 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 can happen? Maybe we can update it. Maybe we can stop it. Who knows? It can go either way. We can either update the strings, stop the strings, or keep it the way it is. Who cares? <laughs> oh, I'm just there to have fun. Okay, I, everyone is gonna be it's gonna be a great time. I know it's like, oh, it's all the way in Italy, but, and again, Italy, come on. Who doesn't want to go to Italy? Yeah. Right, Kahai? So, and then that's, so that's May to, May and June, yeah. or May and the start of June. And yeah. then after that is Seattle? Is that after? Oh, Seattle is uh, September. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. And then. So it's going to be, it's going to be tons of fun. We have, we're, we're looking at another trip in between uh italy and seattle but i don't want to say anything yet because that one i don't know it's up in the air it's up in the air but another international trip yeah what about the la uke fest la uke fest is also september i believe okay yeah that's and like is that before uh seattle um after i think seattle is like in the beginning of september whereas um the la uke fest is at the end of september but mm-hmm. la uke fest that's like that's that's YouTuberville, I think. You know, it's like all the YouTubers are are gonna be there. 
Yeah, we should. And um, yeah, September eighth. So yeah, so the beginning of the you know, beginning of the month. Whereas the LA Yuk Fest is September twenty first. September twenty. Yeah. So we're gonna go do Seattle, come back, oh. do laundry, then come right back out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be good. Be good. So um, yeah. Uh, we speaking of Niho G, we just had a brand new play along that you guys can can uh, can eat up. It's it's awesome. So Niho G and I, um, we did a song by the late great Peter Moon. Uh, wait, no, should it should it late? Is he he passed right? Peter Moon. <laughs> Or Peter did Moon? he not pass? Yeah. I'm okay. Uh, oh my gosh! I just got like this weird feeling of like, yeah. no, he's not. He's alive. And why would you say that? Like, no, you just jinxed him or something. You know? Okay, right? Is yeah, he alive? I'm pretty sure. There we I think go. he's alive. I think he's alive. He might be alive. February seventeenth, two thousand eighteen. Okay, exactly. so pretty recent. Oh, yeah. my heart dropped because I felt <laughs> feel so bad. <laughs> if you, okay, well, late great That's a, Peter Moon. Oh my god, my heart dropped. Rest in peace. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Rest in peace. My God. Oh, farts. <laughs> That's one of those. Like I say a lot of things on this show. That's you know, one of the things that, that I don't. Yeah. I try not to mess with. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, so Peter Moon, the Peter Moon band, um, uh, Island Love. Island Love, such a great song, such a great song. And um, it's one of my favorites, honestly, to play with Niho G. It's, it was one of those, like, does anybody want to learn this song? I'm like, I don't care. I like this song. <laughs> yeah, so me and Kaniho, we just, uh, we just played it because that song is super fun. It's a classic. Here in Hawaii, Peter Moon is, uh, is one of those innovators of uh, ukulele styles that, that you guys should definitely check out. It's, it's just a gateway to, like, if you like that, there's, he's, got, he's got a great catalog of not just ukulele, uh, ukulele songs but great 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 um just songs in general you know like yeah. um people cover peter moon all the time you know <laughs> from from us to people like jake shimbukuro like uh peter moon did kavika you guys ever yeah. heard of a little song called kavika that jake did that britney did that i did that like kyle creator boys did yeah, yeah you know what i mean like that's peter moon baby that's just good stuff okay you guys ever heard of a song little tiny song called guava jam yeah, <laughs> yeah that's peter moon okay <laughs> so we, like uh, we like to joke right that the kyle creator boys wrote a bunch of songs but yeah. kyle creator boys also did peter moon songs yeah yeah, yeah he was one of the one of yeah. troy fernandez's biggest inspirations yes right? yes, yes so like kyle creator boys to me is peter moon to kyle creator boys is is and, what it is you know? yeah 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 and then you can like peter moon band peter moon and then like makaha sons you yeah. get into that yeah, lineage yeah. too and so you you can find a ton from yeah. that because actually um what was it sunday manoa mm-hmm. was like his first band right yeah sunday manoa so that's the one with like manoa. with uh kavika and, and yeah. yeah and then and then spun off from the sunday manoa like one one uh, iteration of Sunday Manoa had the brothers is, Casamero yeah, yeah, yeah. Par- as part of yeah, yeah. Sunday Manoa, yeah. and then they spun off and yeah, did their yeah. own thing, right? Yeah. I think they would collaborate and jam with Is every now and then. That was like a like a pretty like yeah. um, like frequent collaborator. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, these guys just all hung like hung out together. It's kind of <laughs> like you know like how all ukulele players nowadays just hang out. Like they all those Hawaiian musicians just all. Hang hang out and just play music together i th- i think you had that one album that just had like all the great names and stuff like uh was it like bb sean like the bb sean album and then if you look at the musicians who played on that it's like oh yeah oh was, yeah, like, yeah. Featured, yeah yeah featuring it john his Cruz first yeah and, like amazing amazing yeah, henry capono henry produced Capone, yeah. it yeah amazing amazing so check it out um it is Island Love, you know, and that's if that can be a gateway to uh, to listening to more of Peter Moon's music, we would have done our job, I think, you know. Um, yeah. But that song, it can be easy or it can be challenging. Like you, if you just play the chord straight, that'd be super easy. But if you do like the riff that I'm doing while like I'm singing that song, then it can get kind of challenging, but all good, you know. Um, let's see, Kahai, what's what's the uh, what's your ETA? Uh, I don't know. I, yeah, I guess so. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, maybe uh, we're not not gonna have another one this month, right? In, oh no, no, yeah, no. yeah. So we will have one. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll just see when. That's all. Yeah, that, that's all we need to say. There will be an ukulele solo this month, a UU Plus solo that you guys can can num 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 just gobble up if you want to. Okay. Um, Kahai is working on it currently. If it's gonna be released on the 15th, who knows? Who knows? Well, Maybe on the 20th. Maybe earlier. Right? Yeah, I was kind of hoping to get it out earlier, but we'll see. Fifteenth, yeah. I think for sure. But yeah. I was hoping to get it out earlier, and this, then maybe we'll even have another thing too. Yeah, this the the next one. I I don't know which one you're working on, but because I you know we we did we did a bunch. Regardless, all the ones that I gave Kahai recently are nice and challenging ones. So if you guys are are you know using UU Plus or the UU Plus solos to like to learn some good complicated and challenging solo pieces uh lately we've been doing some relatively easy ones to get people into the door of doing some uh, some ukulele solos but these next few solos are poof they're a doozy they're, they're kind of they're like uh songs from like your own like personal yeah library. that's from my yeah. own personal library yes like so it's it's songs that i arranged myself for my own sets mm -hmm. um and then they're not like like super fast or anything mm -hmm. like that they're actually do the opposite they're very slow and that's why they're super hard because the phrasing and and like timing and uh and just the attack on the strings are gonna be very 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 important in uh, in, in these next uh uu plus solo songs and i have more i mean if you guys like that i have tons of of arrangements that i have that are just like that and kahai is working very hard i'm very excited to, sh to show you folks okay uh, anything else? Any other business that we might we might have? If you guys are traveling to Kauai, you know, because we said you can get, you can check out our little ukulele club, there will be an ukulele festival in uh, in April. So it's April fourteen, ukulele festival, right? Uh, yeah. April fourteen here on Kauai. Uh, we are consulting for the ukulele festival uh, or the Kauai ukulele festival. So if uh, yeah, if you want to do like if you want to stay here for a week, you can check out the ukulele club one week, attend the festival, and perhaps attend the AG Ukulele Academy. You know, which will probably up by then. Most likely, it will be up by then. <laughs> That's way too long to not have it. Up. <laughs> the AG Ukulele Academy will be will be up by then. So. You know, either plan a trip to Italy, check us out, or plan a trip to Kauai, which nudge nudge is also good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's There's always uh, a good idea. Yeah, Kauai Ukulele Festival, April 14th. That's gonna be a, that's gonna be a great time. We're uh, we're setting that up right now. Um, of course, uh, Monopoly or Monopolele Ukulele Festival. You can check that out. But um, if you guys want to want to know where we're gonna be at, you can check out Aldrin.com. Aldrin.com has my has my calendar, and it has basically all the information of where we're gonna be at, um, and information on on like the classes, the like in person classes that we have. So um, yeah, check that out. Okay. And you can also register for private lessons, in-person private lessons. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. I meet up with you. We, we like, play ukulele together in person. <laughs> it's much better than, you know, than, like, the, the, um, the private lessons over Zoom. But if over Zoom is all you can do, that's really good also. You can check out the private lessons over Zoom over at ukuleleunderground.com. You want to book a private lesson with me? Here's a pro tip. If you're booking a private lesson... It's a lot more bang for your buck if you sign up for UU Plus and then book a private lesson rather than just booking a private lesson. It's actually cheaper. It's cheaper. Let me say that. It's cheaper <laughs> to, uh, to get UU Plus, even if it's just for that month that you're doing a private lesson with me, then get a private lesson. You get not only the private lesson, but a whole month of UU Plus for cheaper. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Don't. Don't tell, don't tell people, but it is cheaper if you get UU Plus and then book a private lesson rather than just booking a private lesson. It's like $90, but a private lesson becomes $60. And UU Plus is $20, so it's 10 bucks off. Okay? Shh, nobody <laughs> say anything. Nobody. Okay, no, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, uh, anything else? Kahai? Uh, no, I think that's How it. Do we, do, do we pay bills and stuff? Yes, we do. That's why. If you want to help us pay some bills, UU Plus, I just said it, Ukula on the ground, he's going to have to show the same thing again. And if you want to uh, to buy some Ukula on the ground merch, and uh, if you want to purchase an ukulele, if you want to clean your ukulele, if you want, you know, 
if you want beginner ukuleles, you want advanced player ukuleles, if you want the same ukulele that, that I play, the AG model from Kanilea ukuleles, get it now at shop.ukuleleontheground.com. Shop.ukuleleontheground.com. Represent the ukulele on the ground with some stuff from shop.ukuleleontheground.com. Right, Kahai? Yep. Yeah. Should we should we do like like update the pictures like model pictures and just take pictures of you like wearing like the merch and stuff or using the merch? Perhaps if we have like a like a mug, we just take a picture of you at your desk like enjoying your mug. And maybe we can sell more. Uh yeah yeah I think we All gotta right. we gotta work on uh some stuff <laughs> in the store but <laughs> yeah. but but then like take a like hire a model like a uh, like a model uh, like a shirtless full buff model enjoying the cup and just say oh like oh here's Kahai enjoying his <laughs> mug <laughs> yeah, we'll photoshop his head on it <laughs> yeah, photoshop yeah. Kahai's head on it you know it'd be amazing we would sell so much I think <laughs> ah we wouldn't need rubber bands on our uh, on, uh, on our microphones if we did that I, I have a feeling we would still yeah, use uh, yeah that's right we don't want to be too successful right Kahai I got you yeah, I, got, yeah. I got what you're saying trying to say we don't want to be too successful with this it's about <laughs> it's about looking grounded right not actually being grounded yeah. all right well we'll see you folks next time thanks so much for tuning in to the ukulele on the ground podcast we do this every monday 1 p.m hawaii standard time um if you want to jam along with us on some songs just like how we do with the ukulele club that we talked about friday we have aloha friday live jam same time 1 p.m hawaii standard time and um yeah, check out ukuleleontheground.com. Learn yourself a song or two over there and sign up for you. Plus, to take your ukulele playing to the next level. We'll see ya. Aloha. Aloha.